G'day, g'day. Uh, so in this five minute clip, which is just me riding my e-bike from my place to Epping Town Centre to pick up some groceries, I overtake well over 30 cars. This is at around 4 o'clock p.m. on a Friday, so we can assume that the traffic is partially commuters coming home from work early and also partially school pickup traffic. Maybe people doing the grocery run on the way back from school pickup, stuff like that. Uh, and it's horrible. If I were in this traffic, I'd do whatever I could to avoid it. So that begs the question, why is there only one other person cycling in the entirety of this video? Where are the kids riding their bike home like I did when I was in high school? And where are the parents picking up the younger kids in cargo bikes? And where are the office commuters riding home from the train station? As you could just see, there is a separated cycleway, which is a great start, but I've now reached the part where it turns into a shared path, just chock full of obstacles with no buffer between it and the busy, unpleasant Epping Road, besides a fence that will be coming up soon. Um, but as you'll be able to see, the design of that fence means that it's dangerous to ride next to since it's pretty easy for handlebars to get caught in it. Um, and it also does nothing to relieve the stress that comes from the loud, hot, smelly traffic being right there, like l less than half a metre away from you. To make it safe enough for school kids, you need a genuine buffer between the cycleway and the road. And ideally, an actual cycleway, separate from the shared path, with a concrete barrier, maybe with garden beds, the entire way. Because plants will help dampen some of that pollution and the sound, so that's why a garden bed would be a really important part of that theoretical cycleway. There's also the fact that bikes and pedestrians don't have prioritised raised crossings at the wide intersections with side streets, which is especially a problem with the increasing heights of vehicles that means they have bigger and bigger blind spots directly in front of them. Then there are the intersections, as you're seeing right now. The bikes are mixed with pedestrians, the intersections are really wide, you have to cross, um, I believe, five lanes. Uh, and this is just a really odd design choice for a road that is right next to the train station. So this would stifle a lot of potential bike or walking commutes to the train station. And also across the bridge. So as you'll see when these lights finally change, which, you know, who knows how long that'll take. Uh, Epping Road Bridge is almost impossible to cross by bike. Legally, I would have to walk my bike across here or mix with the car traffic. I do neither. I just ride over on the footpath because the footpath is empty. But whenever the footpath isn't empty and I'm riding over, I do walk my bike because you just can't ride next to someone. And there would not be enough space for two bikes to travel in opposite directions across the bridge either. These facts and also the lack of barrier, meaningful barrier between the footpath and the cars, um, all of these facts add up to exclude the vast majority of people who live west of the tracks from accessing Epping Station for their commute and also Epping Public School which is on the other side of the tracks. And this excludes a lot of people from getting to the train station because the bike parking on Beecroft Road on the west side of the train station isn't a secure bike shed like the bike parking on the east side of the train tracks on Langston Place. So here's another really dangerous intersection and the reason this one's dangerous is because if a car is indicating left on Epping Road Bridge they could either be going straight following the direction I just went or left into the road that I just crossed. A raised crossing or reconfiguring that intersection would do a lot to make this area more safe for people walking and cycling. Like I've seen people walk over the garden beds to get to the speed bump to be able to cross that road. Now the traffic did disappear for a bit, but now that we're back on Rawson Street in the town center, it is back baby and it's better than ever. Uh, Rawson Street would be a fantastic place to put a bike lane. You can see there's plenty of space for it. Um, as we reach Coles, you will see that not only is there space due to the wide lanes on Rawson Street, there is also space due to the fact that this street parking is basically useless. There is so much car parking right next to Coles. And the bit that you'll see in this video is just scratching the surface. There's parking under Coles, there's parking on the other side of Coles that you can't see from the street. And it's pretty much never, uh, never full. So you could remove all the street parking and there'd still be plenty of parking. Um, it wouldn't be a worry. So adding cycleways here would mean that more people could come and do their grocery shopping on 
a bike. This makes a huge difference, right? Being able to quickly bike down to the shops instead of walking the 20 minutes or having to own a car is so much easier. But currently the infrastructure is designed to exclude all but the most risk tolerant people from being able to do so. If you want to know more about possible solutions to the less than ideal infrastructure around Epping, make sure to subscribe so you get notified when I release a video about how Epping Road Bridge and its surrounds could be redesigned to be better. Also make sure to check out Better Streets Coalition. Their key asks include 75% of children walking, cycling or taking public transport to school, 1,000 kilometres of cycling routes, 2,560 new or upgraded pedestrian crossings a year, and a few more, but these three are particularly key to more people being able to safely and sustainably just glide past traffic like I did in this video. Or, ideally, for the traffic to just disappear altogether.